The other day I posted a short video with my five top tips for improving the ball toss on the tennis serve. If you haven't had a look at it, it's on this page, this same YouTube page. You might want to have a look and see what you think and by all means leave any thoughts or comments uh, or ask any questions if you have any. There's a number of reasons why I think the serve is important and I thought I'd share with you my five top tips or top thoughts, if you like, on the importance of the tennis serve. Um, just a little bit of context, first of all. Um, a lot of tennis coaches that I speak to and uh, work with on a regular basis report that uh, they find the tennis serve uh, quite difficult to teach, um, probably more difficult in many respects than a lot of other areas of the game. They find uh, technically that they get a little bit bogged down with it. Uh, so coaches find it quite difficult to teach. A lot of players uh, see the value um, in having a serve, obviously to be able to start the point, but they quickly want to be able to serve a bit better as well because they understand the value of having a good serve. But at the same time, a lot of kids especially um, report that um, they find serve activities a little bit boring, a little bit static compared, for example, to rally activities, which they see as more fun. Um, but the serve is really, really important, and I'm a huge uh, advocate of developing the serve early on. So I thought I'd take this opportunity on the back of the popularity of the video that I posted a few days ago, just to share with you my five top tips or top thoughts really on the tennis serve. Now I'm speaking really um, with juniors in mind and kids in mind, but there's no reason why quite a lot of what I'm about to tell you is um, not applicable as well to adults. So number one is that if you look at an average rally length, a typical rally length, not just with the pros, but even at club tennis and junior tennis level, you'll find that it's somewhere roughly around about four to five shots. That means that the serve is 25% there or thereabouts, 25% of the game. So that in itself is the most important reason why would we want to ignore or allow to be underdeveloped 25% of the game, especially when it's the first shot of the rally? So the first uh, reason and the first um, of my top thoughts is that the serve makes up a huge part of the game. And for that reason alone, it's important to get it right and to practice it early on. Thought number two is that if players and kids can't serve, then how are they going to start the rally? Now, a lot of coaches will tell me that um, they allow kids to start rallies in, in, in practice or in uh, matches even with an underarm serve. Now that's all very well and it does get the point started, but the problem is that the more we uh, practice the underarm serve, the less time we're devoting to the overarm serve. So um, I like to think that the underarm serve almost becomes like a comfort blanket and becomes a bit of a, a get out really and avoiding the uh, practice of the overarm serve. So personally, I would rather that, especially for the second serve, um, that the players throw the ball in overarm to start their rally rather than actually practice an underarm serve. Why? Because at least the overarm serve or the overarm throw rather, at least it practices an action which is similar to the overarm serve. Thought number three is that I really do not believe that serving overarm is quite as hard sometimes as we are led to believe. I do think that there is an element of self-fulfilling prophecy with this and coaches uh, tend to um, either say or their body language says, um, well, the serve is difficult. You're going to struggle with this as a young player, as a beginner. I really don't think that we need to make it quite as difficult as all that. If you were to strip the serve back to its most basic essentials, it is simply about putting the ball above your head and hitting it. And I know you're going to tell me that the ball toss is really important and the grip is this and the elbow is that and so on and so forth. But actually, if we could just get our players right from the very beginning just to put the ball up above their head and having a go at hitting it, that already is starting to resemble some sort of rough outline of an overarm serve. So I think we have to be careful with our language. I think we have to be careful with the way that we portray the serve and the, the way that we introduce the serve. And I think the sooner we can make overarm serving part of normality in a typical lesson or a typical session, the better for us and the better for our players. 
Thought number four is that I really do think it's important to get the serve right early on. Now, by early on, I'm talking about the red program for those of you that work with young kids and have a red, orange and green ball program. Now, the reason I believe that it's important that we get the overarm serve right by the end of the red court program is because of what's about to come when they move to the orange court program. And for those of you who know your court dimensions, you'll know that if we take typical uh, court sizes, progressing a child from a red court at 11 metres to an orange court at 18 metres is a court difference, a length difference of 7 metres. If we divide that by the two ends of the court, that's 3.5 metres further back. That means that if the players are not able to serve fairly well on an 11 metre court, then they're going to find it very difficult to do the same thing on a court which is now positioning them 3.5 metres further back. I also believe that the opportunities that exist on the orange court, which is longer and a little bit wider, means that we're able to start to use the serve to open up the court and create the advantage, which I'll come to in a minute. But I really do believe that a core competency for progressing players from red to orange has to be that we get players serving overarm early on. Now, those of you that know me well and know my coaching philosophy believe uh, will, will know that I believe that it's important that part of that is getting the continental grip right and that we should try where possible to get the continental grip either in place or certainly well on the way by the end of the Red Court program. Now, I know, again, some of you listening to this will probably howl at me saying, oh, it's too difficult or what about if they're recreational players? Of course, it depends on the ability of the players, the experience of the players, and it also depends on how much the kids play. But if you think that they're anywhere near being good enough to move to the orange court, then I would suggest that they're probably good enough to start to have a go at an overarm serve, and they're probably good enough to have a go at serving with a continental grip. Finally, thought number five is about the orange court, actually, not the red court. And as I've just said, the orange court is longer, it's a little bit wider, and therefore I view the orange court as an opportunity to do a little bit more with the game than we do tend to do on the red court, which is a lot smaller and therefore has less scope for um, different phases of play and different game situations. So I tend to look at the red court being about developing rally skills and of course, basic serving skills, and the orange court being an opportunity to start to introduce uh, all court tennis or um, the different phases of play, the different game situations, and clearly the serve is an important part of that. So I believe that we should be starting to look at the orange court serve as an opportunity to attack, primarily by moving the opponent out of court with a good combination of direction and a little bit of spin that comes from the continental grip, but primarily by direction. Now for a right-hander, that would mean serving wide from the juice court, which is going to take the opponent out of court and open up the court for the next shot for the server. So then we start to get into the realms of what we call a pattern of play. And if we can start to serve well and then connect that serve with a ground stroke, it could ideally be a forehand, but it might have to be a backhand, then the opportunities obviously exist to be able to hit that crown stroke into the open court, assuming that the serve has moved the, the, the returner, the opponent, a little bit out of court. But if not, to be able perhaps to um, hit the ball uh, into the space and to make the opponent move again. So I really believe that by the time we get the players onto the orange court, hopefully equipped with the serve that they developed on the red court, that they should be able to start to serve, to create the advantage, to move the opponent, to be able to start executing what we call in the future patterns of play. So those are my five reasons or top thoughts on why the serve is so important and why it's so important that we get the serve early on, uh, that we get it right. So please, I'm sure there'll be some comeback on this. I'm sure that some of you will have perhaps some um, objections to some of what I've said. I'm fine with that and I'm happy to engage and discuss. I'm hoping as well that some of you will be in agreement. I'd love to hear your thoughts, any questions you have, and of course, any of your own experiences. Please leave your comments in the chat below. And thanks for listening and good luck working on the serve with your young players.